All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining me for Ash Conversations, episode number seven. Ash Conversations is an internet talk show, basically, where I aim to talk to players in the Super Smash Brothers Melee scene to find out their unique backstories and kind of how they got to where they are today. Today, our guest is going to be Johnny Kim, also known as S2J. He's from SoCal. He's known as the premier, one of the top Captain Falcon mains in the world. He recently got fifth at EVO and is ranked number 16 on the Melee and On Me power rankings. Um, how are you doing today, Johnny? Doing good, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How have, uh, how have you been since Evo? Like, what have you been up to? What I've been up to, I've just been uh, relaxing and uh, went through that one SSS, or rather, uh, so called Coliseum. Played uh, none grand finals. Mm -hmm. And besides that, just streaming and uh, relaxing and enjoying life. How is, uh, have you played none before? Or... Yeah, I played him not in tournament, but I played him uh, exhibition matches. And uh, first time I played him was like Super Nebs three and like a Falcon Rod Robin, and I actually lost to him. And uh, funny thing is, I should I felt like I should have beat him there. And uh, same thing with Coliseum, I thought I should have beat him in winners, and then uh, just does like none comebacks, which he's like really known for. And then uh, just kind yeah, of the Falcon zero to death. Yeah, an ideal without like. <laughs> He doesn't even do it like Wizzy, he just kind of uh, hits you like five times. It's pretty sick. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. How do you do you like Falcon Dittos? Or like how do you feel about them? Uh my favorite compared to uh compared to how like the public views it, I guess. It's not the funnest matchup. Uh luckily most people are pretty bad at it, so <laughs> I, I don't mind it too much, but uh when you play like really top Falcons, it's kind of a pain to do. It's kinda of, like to me, it's just like a glorified chic ditto when it comes down to it. Just like tech chase after tech chase? And... Yeah, yeah. And it's, <laughs> not only just tech chase, it's just like the neutral. It's just kind of lame. But mm -hmm. uh, that's just most ditto's in the game, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that seems pretty common throughout all the matchups. But um, I guess uh, to get into this, uh, what was life like for you growing up when you were pretty young, I guess? You know, uh, were you born... Just... Stateside or yeah, I was born stateside. I was born in uh, Los Angeles, uh -huh. and uh, I grew up like in uh, the Diamond Bar area. Like I uh, went to Castle Rock, and Chaparral Middle School, then and uh, Walnut High School. So I pretty much grew up like in the uh, suburbs of SoCal, mm -hmm. kind of a uh, little bit east of Los Angeles, and uh, pretty boring middle class life. That's like my my upbringing. Did you uh, play a lot of games growing up? Like Hell before. yeah, yeah, I played a shitload <laughs> of games. <laughs> like, uh, what did you play? Like, what was uh, the first encounter you had with video games, I guess? Played, uh, my dad actually had, like, a Nintendo, and he had, like, a lot of games, so I played, like, the classic NES games. Like, Mega Man, uh, Super Mario. Then I got a Super Nintendo, Genesis, and, uh, pretty much kept going until, like, GameCube, and then that's when I stopped buying consoles. Mm -hmm. And, um... Were you kind of competitive before Melee? I guess, like, because I know you played, like, 64, but, like, before game, like, before, like, a Smash game, were you competitive in anything else? Yeah, uh, being, like, Asian, my parents made me, like, play piano, so I went to, like, a bunch of, like, piano competition stuff, and, uh, you know, I wasn't bad, so. <laughs> yeah, that's the Asian factor, I guess. <laughs> Make you play piano. Do you do you think that, up. like, helped you in terms of being, like, a competitive player? Like, being... Oh, uh, yeah, 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 for sure. Like, uh, when you're in these competitions where, uh, definitely, uh, gave me a decent training, gave me, like, an edge compared to most people, I feel. Mm -hmm. And, uh, how about, like, the first game you played competitively? First game I played competitively was actually, uh, actual tournaments was Smash... Well, it's probably, like, Counter-Strike, actually. And then, uh, then it was, a uh, Smash 64. And, uh, what got you into 64 originally, I guess, as a competitive game? I guess, uh, I always liked, the uh, Smash games, you know? I actually, uh, wanted to get to Melee, but, uh, I thought Melee was dead at the time when I really got into it. Like, uh, Brawl came out for, like, a year or so, and then, uh, I'm like, cool, this game's dead, that sucks. Oh, well. But, uh, you know, my my high school buddies play 64, and, uh, randomly, like, I was, like, browsing Smash boards and, like, it's like, oh, there's like a tournament happening in SoCal, like a house tournament. And uh, me and my high school buddy actually went there. And that was my first ever Smash tournament. And uh, Isaiah took like Greyhound just to go from NorCal. Uh, 
He was actually like the first melee player in mid at 64 tournament. It's pretty cool. And um, what was the 64 scene like back when you were playing? Because like, if melee was dead, I imagine that the 64 scene was kind of struggling too. Yeah, I mean, this house tournament had like 15 people, and uh, most of it was just like net play at the time, smash boards, net play people, mm -hmm. internet people. But uh, you know, the street just didn't have the biggest scene, but it was just a bunch of uh, I guess just a bunch of diehards. Mm -hmm. In a way, like melee was a uh, before a pre-documentary, just the same uh, group of homies. You see, like the same 20 people every uh, tournament or so. so. Kind of the same way, just smaller. And uh, how far did you take, I guess, 64? Like, how did you do in that tournament? I'd say it wasn't bad. Uh, I was, like, pretty good. But uh, I was, like, pretty good when no one else really took the game that seriously. And the uh, proper, like, stages weren't even established. I think I played when Hyrule Temple, or Castle, whatever it's called. Hyrule Castle was the, the main stage to play on. And uh, that stage actually is pretty bad, so... <laughs> I think now it's just like everyone plays on Dreamland, so... Yeah. Yeah, I was, like, pretty good for my time, but uh, that's before, like, people got really serious and before you started seeing, like, 64 to Apex. Yeah, I was, I was all right. And then uh, I got to Melee, I'm like, I like Melee better, and uh, I'd rather just play Melee than 64. I see. And uh, how long was it that you played 64 for? Like, how many years? Literally, uh, probably, like, uh, about, like, a year and a half before I, like, completely quit. And, uh, you quit because, like, I'm guessing you just started playing Melee, right? Or was it, like... Somewhat, somewhat, yeah. I mean, the game itself, uh, I just think the game... Personally, I just didn't like the way it was competitive. I, thought it was, I think it's, a, like, a great game, like, just messing around with. But, uh, it's a bunch of, like, cheesy stuff that I didn't uh, want to deal with. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't like how easy it is to, like, you, you touch somebody and then you can kill them. So it kind of promoted, like, a lot of camping and, uh... Mm -hmm. I'd rather play a game where, uh, it's pretty much you're getting wobbled, like, you're getting, like, fucking wobbled every time you get touched, so I didn't want to deal with that. That's just the way I see it. Were there, uh, any Melee players that played 64 at the time, besides, like, uh, yeah? You know, uh, Lovage actually played, too. He actually, uh, was, like, how I got into Melee. I met him, my second 64 tournament was, uh, some venue in LA, and he, uh, I actually met him there. Uh, so Oscar played too, and uh, it's funny because, like, the last 64 event I entered in NorCal, uh, I think he, like, fucked me up, and then I stopped playing. He, he fucked me up like Pikachu. <laughs> and then uh, I'm like, I'm done with this. <laughs> yeah. Who do you main in, uh, 64? I play, like, a mix of, uh, Yoshi, Falcon, and, uh, Fox. I think I liked Yoshi and Fox the best. Mm-hmm. And then, um, what was the transition into Melee like for you? Like, I'm assuming you played a lot casually before, right? Like, with friends and things like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I kind of just played, uh, mostly when I first started going to college. And, uh, you know, uh, somehow I saw, like, a tournament up here, and I'm like, holy shit. And then, uh, actually, uh, I think the first I played, and, uh, I lost like Tofu and Tofu Kints for several tournaments. Mm -hmm. From then on, like, uh, I was pretty hooked. Like, uh, there's like a Smash Club with Tofu and uh, some other people that you still see in SoCal, sometimes like Peligro and uh, Manatee. Mm -hmm. And um, did you know, like, did you watch a lot of competitive melee before jumping in? Or? I watched uh, some of it. Yeah, I know. I knew about MLG, for example. Like, mm -hmm. uh, on YouTube, I'd watch like uh, Ken Isaiah, as in PC Chris. Mm -hmm. That was like uh, when I was like the prime of MLG. I think 2006. That was when I was like 16, and uh, after that, like uh, it kind of had like a small resurgence. Then it just died completely. So I thought Melee was toast because of brawl. Mm -hmm. And uh, how was your transition from 64 into Melee? Like, oh, how much uh, came through, like tech skill wise, and. Do you think playing 64 before Melee helped you in a way? A little bit, yeah. A little bit, yeah. Like, uh, fundamentally, there's still, like, L canceling, or I think 64 is, like, Z canceling. But, uh, you know, combo and spacing got to be... Definitely helps a decent amount, like, transitioning. Not, like, a, an insane amount, but it definitely helps. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And um, I guess, how do you do in melee tournaments when you first started playing? Because you came from a 64 background. So you kind of had like some Smash tournament experience. Uh, wasn't, I wasn't terrible. I was actually, uh, I tried to like basically copy Sound Spectre <laughs> and just be really fast and tricky. So I wasn't terrible, but, uh, my first, my second turn was actually Mango Juice, and my pool had a uh, replicate, uh, Pat's House Pat and uh, Nation, the Kirby player, and I actually lost to Nation, who played Kirby. So, I was like, all right, but uh, I also sucked. I also lost to Bob Money, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, did you start off playing Falcon when you switched to melee? Uh, competitively, I play like DK Falcon Ganon, and uh, settle with Falcon. I still like DK a lot though. What uh? What made you like settle down, choosing Falcon? Still, Falcon was the funnest character, and uh, at the time, I was like a big Isaiah Sound Spectre fanboy. But uh, but mostly, I just thought Falcon was like the funnest. So, just mm-hmm. went with it. You just went with it, and uh, so you you played in college, and I'm assuming you just played like all four years, and whatnot, yeah. right? Yeah, pretty much. And uh, I guess when was it that you started to get like heavily involved in the SoCal Smash community? Say, uh, when I met Dunk, actually, uh, at the time, Dunk, his house was like the hub for uh, meeting people, and uh, or like for SoCal Smash, that's where like Hugo, Lovage, Mango, Joey, Alice, every- basically everyone that was like good and homie in SoCal met there, and uh, his girlfriend at the time was going to my school. So that's kind of how I, like, met him, and then, uh, I kind of got lucky meeting, like, becoming friends with, like, the right group of people, and, like, training, getting better. Is that how you met, like, the whole NorCal- Norwalk crew, I mean? Pretty much. I think I might have met, like, Mango or Joey before that, but, uh, that's before, like, that's when I really, like, started hanging out with them and stuff. And, uh, I guess, like, how was it to go into this group of players who are just, like, really, really good at the game? Uh, it was it was really cool. I loved it. Like, uh, definitely a really cool bunch of people. And uh, guess it was kind of maybe a little intimidating at first. Like, uh, I think every scrub would like meet their favorite player for us, and they're like, "Oh my God, it's this guy." You know, I think a lot of people experienced that when they're first playing the game, you know. I was one of those people at first. But, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was cool. Very and, uh, what were your, uh, your first interactions with, like, Mango and Joey like? Uh, pretty cool. They were definitely, like, fuckers in their own way. Like, uh... <laughs> I don't know, I guess they were pretty much, like, trolly. But, uh, definitely, uh, cool people. Especially when it became better friends. And, uh, where was it that, like, you first met both of them at? First met them? I think Joey I first met, like, you know, Connor or the kid. I yeah. Think, like, house tournament, uh, that was my third tournament where I first played him. Mango actually met, uh, Psycho Midge's house, I think. Mm-hmm. Just in, like, a random Smash Fest. But, but yeah, once again, like, Dunk's house is when I first really hang out with him. Okay. And, um, how was... Is- you kind of your rise to becoming a better player. Like, what did it take for you to, like, want to improve? Like, did you have the drive from the start to want to be one of the best players in the world? Yeah, I definitely did. Like, uh, I pretty much worked my way up. Like, uh, I lived in Riverside back then, and I still do now, but, uh, in Riverside, I met, like, the people, Smash Fest, people like, uh, like, Knives, uh, San Diego Reaper, I don't know if you know that guy, uh, Nima and like I basically worked my way up. I was willing to drive like really far just to play people my level and better. And like I, 805 is like an almost two hours away. I, I was willing to make the drive in the summer of my freshman summer between freshman and sophomore. So I really wanted to get better and uh, I really like put a lot into getting like better at the game. Mm-hmm. I'd say so. Yeah. And then Dunk's house happened, which was perfect for me too. Who were your uh, main training partners before Dunk's House? Before Dunk's House? Uh, I'd say probably like Tafu when I went to school. 
Toffle mm-hmm. fucked me up like hella. And then it took me like half a year before I started like beating him or going even. Huh. And was he one of like the first people you played that made you realize like, oh, I'm bad at this game? Or who yeah. was that that kind of just like beat down your confidence in the game of Smash? He definitely showed me how bad it was, especially for the Sheik. But uh, I don't know. I always uh, I have a very big competitive drive, and uh, I wasn't that bad at video games too. I knew I knew I could do it. I like, get pretty good at it, really. Mm-hmm. And um, were there any roadblocks that you hit? Like, did you have problems like managing school and playing, or just like you hit like a barrier where it's like I I feel like I can't get better? Well. Uh... I really didn't give a fuck about school, so. But I was really good at like uh, half-assing my way through school my whole life, so not that big of a problem. But uh, still graduated. You went to LA, right? You yeah, I went to UCLA. So. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's pretty good to half-ass your way all the way through UCLA. I feel. But. Um, yeah, I wish I made better use of my time, but uh, it could be worse. But what were like some of the roadblocks you hit in terms of competitive play? Say uh, just, just those certain people that you have trouble beating. And uh, for me, it was like uh, MACD for a long time. I couldn't beat uh, Tafo Replicate. But I, yeah, eventually, uh, I just worked hard, I guess, to get better enough to beat them. And... Uh... Like, besides traveling a lot and, you know, playing with everything you could, what were other things you did to get better? The things I did, uh... That's what I mostly focused on, just playing friends with people. I wasn't really, like, a... I'm not really a studier at heart. Mm-hmm. So, uh... To me, just playing people my level are a little bit better, at least. Like, uh... That was my path to improvement. And I, I grinded hell out with people, especially at Dunk's house. And uh, how many hours a week do you think you were playing kind of on your grind? Probably like uh, upwards of like 10 to 20 hours a day. A day? I mean, not a day, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, damn, that's, that's like, some real shit. Oh my god. Like a week. And then when it was like summer, probably like uh, 20 to 30. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was a pretty, I was addicted to Smash. And, um, whenever like... People tell you like whenever I hang with like even like Alex or uh, I eventually started hanging with Norwalk too, and I would mostly just like get hooked to melee, and mm-hmm. then eventually do other stuff besides play melee. So I was a fiend. <laughs> and uh, when was it that you saw like kind of results from all your practice coming off? Like when did you finally have like what you considered like your first big win? Say uh, when I really started trying, it took me like uh, four to six. I think half a year really. I beat uh, Hugs. It's my first. Th- Big W, in my opinion, back in the day. At like a, I think it was like a Irvine local. I forgot. I think it's called like a G Rev tournament. That's Hugo was the first person I beat that was considered good. And then, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I guess when was it that you started to travel? Were you traveling throughout college or? Yeah, I, I definitely did. Uh, my first big travel was a uh, big house one to the midwest i could have won to genesis one but uh that would have been like my fourth tournament and, uh, that's when i was really just gone to the scene it was definitely big house one though and went to the, the midwest and met like joe guy mm-hmm. and a bunch of people and uh how do you do cool. the first big house i got second place i lost to uh oscar lovage uh-huh. we also won teams me and oscar so uh pretty much a really good result. and uh back then that tournament had like a hundred 50 people, which at the time was like a, a buttload. Mm-hmm. What made you want to travel all the way to Michigan to play? I think it was like a combo of uh, I really want to travel and get better, and uh, Joe like, offered like some deal on tickets, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly. So. Yeah. And uh, who do you go through in your run to get second? I think I lost to Unknown, then I beat a. Uh, Bunch of Midwest people. I'd be like uh, Tink, beat uh, Dreffen. I also beat Kirby Kaze, if I remember correctly. I think I beat uh, Vance. That's how I got to like top top two, and I got played Oscar, and then got my my ass whipped. Mm-hmm. It's uh, looking. And yeah, was Big House when you kind of started to get national recognition, or 
when do you feel like you kind of put yourself on the map as like a respectable Smash player in the world? Say when I started uh, getting like top three in locals, like uh, I think uh, similar peers were like uh, MACD and West Balls. We all, all three of us started getting better and then eventually became like me, Fly, West getting top three at locals because Mango and at the time Joey didn't really play. Joey made a comeback a little bit later, but uh, I think around the time when us three started dominating like locals, that's when people I think started noticing me. What time? Was that around like what year? Two thousand mid two thousand ten eleven, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, out of curiosity, like, what was your first interaction with like NorCal like? Like the first tournament you traveled up there, or the first time uh, NorCal traveled down? Like, how'd you do? Oh, um, uh, I forgot. I, I remember going up there for like locals, shit. Because I remember you went to like a few of like the Exoduses and stuff like that. The FUD records tournaments, right? Yeah, yeah. I think I mostly just uh, got like maybe top eight. Mm -hmm. I was never like uh, I did beat uh, like later. I I won NorCal like a decent number of times over the over the years. At first, I didn't do that well. But I think one of those FUD records tournaments I actually beat like the one grand finals, maybe twice. Mm -hmm. That's when you still use duck. Yeah, I see. And um, kind of moving in to the more modern era, were you always playing from like? Do you ever take a break, or were you just consistently playing the game from like when you started? Definitely take breaks. Uh, my biggest break so far was like uh, last year. I didn't play for like about uh, from like January to about uh, April. Mm -hmm. I just uh. Kind of like uh, going through like a quarter life crisis. Like uh, mostly I was just playing mailing nothing else, and uh, I didn't have any real drive to like do anything else too. So I was really like soul searching, and wanted to just take a break anyways. Like uh, I've been going to tournaments my like over six years now, and uh, that's really uh, I don't know. I was I'm not I wasn't really uh, I was kind of like on the border of being a player who could like live decently or somewhat decently and in the end I didn't really find anything that I pursue so I just kind of came back to melee <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I don't think anyone like ever quits like yeah. every player is like oh I'm retiring and, like you see them back and like at a tournament like a few months later mm -hmm. but um I guess, how was the transitional period of, like, the new era-ish of Melee, like, in 2013, post-Evo, for you? Uh, like, when did you start, start thinking, like, maybe, you know, I could just be full-time Smash? Probably, uh, this year. Like, when Twitch got really big that, uh, I could run, like, a stream and make some money off of it. That's when I thought, uh, you know, I could probably do well at tournaments and uh, hopefully land a sponsor and stream decently enough and make a decent living. Maybe I want to do something else in addition. I don't want to just uh, only do gaming 24-7, but uh, probably like about this year or last year. And, um, you know, you kind of struggled for a while in the sponsorship hunt. Yeah, You know, I did like, um, what do you feel like, I mean, how was that whole experience for you? Because I know there's, like, a long period of time where, like, no one, like, really kind of approached you, and you're just kind of, like, doing uh, really well at these SoCal locals, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a guy who, uh, had, like, potential, but, uh, when it came to, like, big terms, I dropped the ball, or, uh, I think Big House 5, I, I think I should have beat a bait. I think people would agree on that. If I beat him, I would have got top eight, basically, but, uh, that glitch happened, they got in, like, ninth place. At the time, like, you needed, like, top eight for sponsors to, like, give a fuck. If you get ninth, like, no one cares. Besides that, I wasn't really doing too hot. Uh, kind of sucks, you know, I... It sucks being, like, a player that's close to, uh, being good enough. If you're not quite there. It sucks for, like, any athlete or any other game. And I was one of those people, I felt. But I've been leveling up lately, so... And uh, you talked kind of about the the abate set. 
which is kind of one of the most famous sets from last year. What went through your mind in that whole situation? I guess I'm like when you hit him off stage, pre glitch to post glitch after. Oh, match. Uh, I just thought uh, this would definitely work, even though it's obviously risky as hell. Like uh, there's no way he would see it coming. And I think I was right. Like based on what happened, I think he. I totally would have beat him if it didn't glitch. After, uh, I won't give you the non-esports version of it, but uh, basically, uh, wow, that's fucking lame as fuck. You can you can be non-esports here. I'm good. Yeah, okay. You don't want to hear my non-esports. <laughs> I'm like, damn, it's fucking lame. Uh, I was pretty pissed, yeah. I even wrote on Twitter, like, I'm mad. Got, like, a lot of favorites. And stuff. Yeah. I was I was pretty pissed. Not gonna I, lie. Like, what? How long did it take you to realize, like, what happened? Like, did you instantly uh, recognize, like, oh, invisible ceiling, or, like... No, I some, definitely, some like... Jake shit happen? I definitely, like... My brain, like, farted for, like, a split second. I'm like, the fuck? And then, <laughs> I think if I reacted right away, like... If you actually watch the set, I'd die, like, by point. Like, barely, I barely. So if I reacted a little bit faster, I would be fine, but, uh... Didn't really register that that would have happened. Is it, like, kind of looming in the back of your mind now, if you ever go for something like that? It's, like... Uh, yeah, what if... I, I, I'm never jumping off again against Luigi. <laughs> Stay, staying the fuck on stage. I'm not, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, like, going into the salty suite, I guess, where you're just like, I'm just gonna fuck this guy up and, like, get the W that uh, I should have had. I guess. I mean, I, I wasn't really too salty against him. I think it baits a chill dude. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't really salty at all, but, uh, I guess it was like super hype, you know. I'm not like a oh fuck this guy for because he beat me in a match because of a glitch. Like, don't like this guy. I'm not that kind of person. So, but yeah. And um, you kind of talked about how when you went to bigger tournaments, you would drop the ball. And uh, why do you think that kind of happened? Say uh, I think it's a combination of like being nervous and uh, just skill too, like. Uh, I'm a very stubborn player, and uh, people will discover new stuff with Falcon, and at the time I'm like, no, I want to play my way. I don't want to play, like, 20 GX people, because they're lame, and then I lose. Or, like, uh, it's like a combination of me, like, being stubborn, and it's not good enough, too. I'm a very, like, my skill is pretty linear, I feel. Like, uh, I slowly get better, but I always get better, so. Mm -hmm. And, um, I guess, do you ever feel, like, your character held, is holding you back? Because I've seen you, you've dabbled with like a few other characters. Not really. I think Falcon is just my best character straight up. Like, uh, plus he has no matchups that really like fuck him over completely. Like, no no character in the game is like an instant, like a W against Falcon. It's not like Icy's with Peach or stuff like that. You know, Icy's might have like more explosive results, but, uh, can can you can you repeat that every tournament? Nope, you need the right bracket. And Falcon Assuming you have enough skill, I think you can win every tournament. So I wouldn't blame Falcon. I mean it's not maybe it's not easy compared to other characters, but um it's definitely doable. Mm -hmm. And uh I guess how about the period where you were experimenting with Falco? Kinda like what was with that? Uh I think I just wanted like to find an answer to like Sheik. And at the time, Falcon, I really struggled with some counter picks against like Spacey's. I'm like, why not just play Falco on the stages? And I still got fucked up, anyways. Like my Falco doesn't have a very high win rate when I pulled it out, and I just got better enough with Falcon to not have to worry about that pretty much anymore. So you've like pretty much just retired all secondaries. Uh, uh not necessarily. I'm sometimes I pull it out like a dream hack. My Falcon was playing really bad, so I. But mostly Falco, actually, against the people I played against. I think Falco against like mid-level players, you're gonna have an easier time. Then, uh, especially if you're playing Falcon and uh, you're just playing like like dog shit, you might as well just uh, that's what I did and it worked. It's not gonna be like the norm. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess what do you think is holding you back right now? Where like what do you think you need to work on in order to be breaking top eight more? Because you. You've been breaking top eight 
a bit recently. Like, I mean, Evo, you got fifth, and uh, I believe you got Pound. pound. Yeah, yeah, Pound, I got seventh. Uh, just need to be able to play my A game whenever I play a match. You know, it's it's people always. Uh, everyone can like play in the room and like be amazing, but you got to be able to do it at tournaments. And uh, a lot of factors come in besides it being a tournament. Like uh, you got to play well for like a long time. Like it's pretty much like an endurance test in a way. In addition, like uh, you got to play well for like couple matches really like I'm not the most consistent player like uh, the same day I'll randomly play good to bed so to me this just means I have to get my, my uh, B game a lot better to uh, be able to win even if I'm not playing my best mm -hmm. so yeah and you kind of talked about how you've never really been a person to like study a lot right uh before yeah now I now I do it's mostly what I do on a stream. I just uh, review matches and like, hey, I learned something new. Or uh, I now picked up some habits that this guy has or whatever. And it definitely helps. Mm -hmm. have there I been, feel... What's up? Go ahead. Have there been any other changes you've made to like your practice regimens? Or like kind of like what are your practice regimens in general? Like off stream and kind of outside of Duncan Mango's place? Pretty much just... Uh, I don't play too much. I'm more of a try to read people and figure them out. Uh, but when I do, uh, I basically just study a lot more and see, like, hey, what does Wizzy do in this situation? What does Nun do? And uh, how can I adapt that into my game? And stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To me, that's I pretty much had the tech down. I've been playing for, like, seven years. So I don't really need to, like, warm up. I'm not like a fox man where you got to, like, practice a couple hours every day to, like, stay in shape. And, um... How do you feel about the future of Falcon in the meta? I'd say he's only going to get better. Uh, I'd say he's definitely better than like Peach, for sure. Not by a whole lot, but I think uh, ask any uh, decent player, in my opinion, they'll say Falcon is better than Peach. And um, what and, do you uh, think? Oh, sorry, like, like results-wise too, he's just getting better. You see, was he probably the most consistent nowadays? Uh, same with none. Me and Gravy too. Gravy, uh, even though he uh, supposedly quit, he was beating a lot of good people and getting better. And um, what do you think it, Falcons need to do to kind of to get better? Because like Twenty GX has their whole thing, but like, what do you think? I think uh, we all just need to like learn from each other. Like, uh, if all the Falcons combined, then I think Falcon would be unbeatable. But uh, we all have our own ways of playing. But we got to. Kind of like mix it together. I feel like Falcon's a character where you got to be good at everything to pull it off. You're not ICs where you can just wobble. You can suck really bad at the game and wobble and uh, win, win sets off of people. Like Falcon, you got to be pretty good at everything. So every little like uh, micro situation counts. That's why we all got to like learn from each other. That's why I've been studying like other matches, even though I don't maybe I don't want to play like them, but I'll definitely take some stuff. That's good. What is it that you think you could really learn from the other Falcons? Like 20GX and none. None. His CC game is amazing. And uh, my CC game is pretty bad. And I used to, my, my worst aspect used to be edge guarding. For now, for sure nowadays it's like CC. My CC is a uh, crouch counseling. It's pretty mediocre. In terms of uh, 20GX, maybe uh, their tech chasing game is amazing. Their regrabs. And uh, I think me and none, we can definitely better at tech chasing if we kind of adapt that style. I don't think none will, will ever change the way he plays to be like 20 GX. But, uh, I'm trying to like, I'm making some adjustments to my game to be more consistent. And uh, what do you think the other Falcons could kind of learn like from your style? Or like what makes your style more unique than uh, this? I'd say my neutral is more dynamic, just like mix-ups and uh, general changing of style so that you're not predictable I think uh, 20 Jex tends to kind of know what they're going to do after a while they're not really uh, mix up people they just kind of like see a, a, a such situation and then pick one option based best option that they think it is but uh, against good players you can't be uh, predictable especially with Falcon he doesn't have like broken considered broken moves that always win a situation you gotta like change it up and sometimes the second best option is better and that's when I see when I watch like Gravy and even Wizzy. Like even though Wizzy is 
probably like still considered like number one at the moment. So like, there's moments where like he doesn't really mix it up. Enough, I feel. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you feel about Falcons matchups? Like, what's your favorite matchup? Which matchups do you think suck, and which ones uh, do you like not like playing? I think I personally like spaces, especially when they're like bad spaces, and it's just like really fun. It's fucking them up. But, uh, good match is probably like Lodi's. I think you can dual main Falcon with anybody, and the uh, Falcon will always be a good choice against all the good floaties in the game. Except maybe Sheik, but I think Sheik, even the Sheik matchup isn't as bad as people think anymore. So, so bad matchups uh, probably goes like Falco is on paper the on paper the worst, but even Falco you can like fuck up with your hits, kill them. Probably like Falco, Fox, Sheik, Puff. That's probably the order of a uh, hardest hardest matchups. And um. So like the the Falcon Puff matchup, like Wizzy, like recently kind of like fucked up H box three owing him. Yeah. Like, what do you think, kind of like about that set? I think H box played a uh, his C game. Mhm. Mm and Wizzy played amazing. Uh, regardless, Wizzy still had like the right answer to H box. Like, uh, you think Dreamland's like an auto loss for Falcon or any almost anybody, but Wizzy played like a pretty. Pretty smart, smart way to counter H box. Like he had the top platform and Puff. One of her weaknesses is she can't really jump up fast enough. So, was he having a lead? He's kind of like stood on the top platform and then H box eventually would just like try to go up there and then Wizzy would drop down and like scoop him and just things like that. I thought Wizzy played amazing, but H box played kind of bad. And um, you know you. You had like a crazy run at Evo. Like, do you want to just kind of like talk us through it? Sure. Like, what went into the planning before Evo and the prep? Like, did you do anything different or? Yeah, I kind of focused on uh, when I was training with Mango and Alex and uh, Joey. I really focused on uh, kind of trying to hold my weaknesses against Spaces. Like, uh, I'd say my weakness at the time was uh, edge guarding somewhat. But really, my tech chases weren't like uh, really consistent. I was more of like a, a gambler. And do you want do you want that for like best out of three sets? I'd say not really. You want to be more consistent. Best out of threes. You don't have enough like you don't have as much time for reads. And I also prepped a lot more for Sheik. Kind of really studied uh, both Wizzy and Nun. And uh, at Evo itself, before I play like important matches, I found like a good Sheik. I played pretty much like the one or Plup. Before I play like a uh, bunch of sheiks, and uh, because they're so much harder than my opponents, it made it so much easier when I played them. Like I see all these holes that uh, Dewan and Plup didn't have. Mm -hmm. So before that, I would just like jump in without really caring. But this time, I really like tried my hardest. Plus, I had tempo on my side too. Like tempo actually uh, really uh, helped me out. Like Liz, uh, she's like the social media person, but. Uh, she pretty much was like a second manager to me, along with uh, Cherry, and with people. So I gotta thank them for helping me out too. Yeah, you had a really kind of chic, heavy bracket. You had yeah. to like Swedish to face roll to like Fruit Loop, right? Yeah, I went on, like uh, face roll winners and then uh, Swedish. I lost. Losing to Swedish actually helped me, by the way. I'll talk about that later. Uh, then I played a uh, face roll again, which kind of sucks because. Uh, but yeah, I beat him, and then I played Fruit Loop. So I had like four Sheik matches in a row, and then I played a uh, Javi, uh, Drug Fox, and then Duck for top eight, which is really fortunate for getting top eight because that's probably like my best matchup, with Samus. Mm -hmm. And Duck hates Falcon, so it was like a. So yeah, coming back to me using Swedish. If I if I beat Swedish, I would have to play Kevin. But even even if I win or lose to Kevin, I'd be in a tough spot to get top eight because. Uh, You'd have to play like Mewtwo King, yeah, and then MTK. Okay. And uh, I'm probably I'm probably not the favorite. I'm close against MTK. I might have a chance, but uh, you know he's the he's really good as Falcon. Wizzy has still hasn't beat him, and he's considered probably the best. Uh, yeah, I'd have to play MTK, and then losers I play uh, either West Balls or um, 
I think it was Shroom. Shrooms, yeah. yeah. And Shroom kind of has my number nowadays, so Sweetest beating me was <laughs> really good. And I gotta thank Evo for being like fucked up in their seating. So yeah, I'm happy Swedish didn't choke as hard as I did. If you watch the set, like it was like a big choke fest, and uh, it was really good that I lost. <laughs> was it like after the fact that you realized this, or like? Yeah, I did. I'm like, hey, I beat. I played Duck, not a uh, the one or. Was less. it on? Was it on Saturday that you realized it, or uh, or on like after like the whole tournament, you're kind of like reflecting on the brackets. Kind of Saturday, like I'm like, hey, I played Duck next. I hope. And then I'm like, or like, loser on Modern and Duck, so I'm like, nice, fuck yeah. Let's go Armada, and then Armada beat Duck. And you you made top 8? Yeah, pretty happy. And um, I guess, how is it for you making top 8? Because, you know, you've just kind of been struggling a lot. I mean, to make top uh, 8 at like the largest tournament must have been something else. Yeah, uh, felt pretty good. I got, I didn't even just reached top 8, I also beat uh, Wes, who I haven't beat for like a year to get 5th. And uh, definitely felt like really good, like before that I was just like getting fucked up. Essentially getting fucked up, I wasn't doing too bad, but uh... Like, it wasn't looking good for me getting sponsored in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I wasn't too happy about myself as a whole, but suddenly Tempo picked me up and then I had a great run at EVO and pretty happy now. Feeling good about melee. How do you feel going into the tournament? It being like your first sponsor tournament, because like I know a lot of players, the first time they get sponsored and like the first tournament they go to, they struggle a lot. Like last year, Evo shroomed. He had just gotten signed by Winter Fox, and like <coughs> there's like kind of like an extra level of pressure, right? Or are you just like, oh, I'm just gonna do amazing to make my sponsor happy? I don't think it really affected me uh, either way. Pretty good at like uh, focusing on the match itself. I didn't have whenever I played the matches, I wasn't thinking about like I gotta do good for tempo or anything like that. So I'd say it didn't really affect me sponsorship. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess what kind of happened between you and Wes? Because he's kind of been like your SoCal demon for a long time. I'd say uh, part of it was best out of three, and also it was the big Evo stage. He definitely, we both didn't play our A game, but uh, I kind of edged out both games. Except for me, the ending game too, I kind of uh, beat him pretty bad. But uh, besides that, uh, it was the EVO big stage. It was like our first big match on stage. And uh, I definitely, I was definitely improving against him. I wasn't getting like super fucked up like I used to at uh, Emerald City. I lost him like 2-3 both times. So uh, I was definitely getting better at the matchup. I also think West maybe just thought he was just going to beat me. Because, you know, I wouldn't blame him. He fucked me up, like, over a year. So, But yeah, I was kind of ready. I uh, really thought about his bad habits. And actually, like, the final stock on game two, he, he loves edge counseling side being. And uh, I just throw, like, a really early knee. And it worked. It just it just killed him. Because he's, yeah. So I pretty much, like, thought about uh, his bad habits. Like, he's a really good player, but he has a lot of holes in his gameplay. That I thought about, uh... Preparing for and it paid off. How much thought have you put in put into kind of beating Wes in, over like the last few years? Because he's kind of like the person holding you back from winning all the SoCal locals and stuff. Say a uh, pretty decent amount. I was like, damn, this matchup's impossible. I'll probably try going Sheik or Marth. I didn't actually ever do that, but uh, <laughs> that's how I felt when I played him. Like. Uh, I just think the way he plays it when he's on point, like uh, it just feels like a busted matchup. Like definitely Falcon's worse. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I was like, maybe I should study some Sheik Max Sheik videos. Let's go Sheik. I went Falcon and it worked out. I think I really think uh, all the factors pay, like get to like my favor at Evo. I'm not saying like now I'm better than Wes or now I'm gonna fuck him up. I still think he's really tough. Mm -hmm. And um. I guess, what was the whole top 8 experience for you like? Because, um, you know, the stage was pretty fucking nuts. Like, the whole whole setting. Yeah, like, it was how... crazy. Like, uh... Because, like, how was it for you, like, the second you kind of, like, walked in the venue? Like, what was your initial thought, like, when I was, like, kind of getting you to the green room? That was fucking crazy. Like, uh... <laughs> that, was the, that was the first time I've ever been on, like, the super big stage. And, uh... 
It's really nuts. Like a fucking octagon. Yes. Like hella fans and or like, you know, people was, I really never experienced anything like that before. It was pretty uh mind blown for me. Mm -hmm. And uh how is the kind of the warm up room situation like like how how did you take it? Because it's like you have all the top eight players in one room split between three setups, right? Yeah. And it's like you're just sitting next to like kind of like five feet away from West this whole time. And like what's going through your mind in that situation? I didn't think too much about that. I just pretty much warned about Mango and uh thought about like what should I do against Wes and uh against Mango I just preps and made sure my I was on points when I played him. Mm -hmm. So I wanna make mistakes, especially when I play on stage. Because uh, one mistake in this game nowadays can kill you. Yeah, it wasn't too like pretty much didn't really care that Wes was right there. It wasn't like a really cramped room, so mm -hmm. yeah. And um how do you deal with the first time playing on that stage, like, kind of what went through your mind, like, the second, because, like, when you walked up on that stage, like, it was, like, a, it's a completely different perspective. Like, what was going through your mind, like, when you finally got up there to play Wes? Uh, just tried really hard to not think about anything else besides the game, and just think about the next, what's the next right move to make, and, um, surprisingly, I wasn't too nervous. Uh, I want to say I'm, like, completely, like, not nervous, but, uh, I thought like I would choke a lot more, but I didn't really like. I was, I guess, like experience helped me out a bunch, and like uh, just not thinking about other stuff, just focusing on melee. Mm -hmm. And um, do you have any like pre-match rituals or anything you tell yourself? Uh, no. I just kind of just try not to be distracted by other 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 stuff, you know, and uh. To make the right choice. And um, when you're playing in these like really tense situations, do you find yourself like focusing completely everything out and just completely focusing it on the game? Or does like heckling ever get to you or like the crowd cheering? I guess the crowd's like normally cheering for you. Yeah, I guess if people heckle or cheer, like if people are having like a conversation, it'll be really distracting. But Evo did a good job though, because they had those headphones that uh, blocked out everything else. So, yeah, it could it could definitely get like uh, distracting. But I got I got pretty used to it. You know, you play this game a decent amount of time. So, and um, could you hear the commentators, like the announced commentary at all? Not really. I couldn't hear anything because I wore the headphones. So, because I was really curious about the situation for the players on stage, because it's. Very rare that we see in-house commentary at a tournament. Like the only other time we had that was at like MLG, like forever ago. Yeah, it was it was, it was fun. Like uh, I kind of heard the audience, but I'd never I'd never really heard our Scar Tof, like uh, enough to like distinguish their voices. Mm -hmm. And um, could you feel like physically like kind of audio like all the things you did in game? Like could you feel like vibrations on the stage and like. Like a, fi uh, like a haptic feedback for all the actions you were doing. No, I'd say it was, it was like, even though it was, it was like a huge arena, like there's a decent amount of like space that uh, didn't really feel like, it wasn't as intense as, as I thought it would be pretty much. It's pretty surprisingly chill. I think if you ask like other people, they would agree. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's definitely like a stage that no one was could ever like really prepare for yeah like the only thing that's ever been close to it is like genesis but even that was like a fourth the size of the the venue right yeah it's like in uh, concord <laughs> but um i guess looking forward now what are your kind of goals for the rest of 2016 and 2017 now that you're sponsored you're I'm assuming you're going to be traveling a lot more. Uh, yeah, I want to just uh, keep improving and uh, do the best I can at melee. Uh, I want to be uh, one of the one of the gods, pretty much. I think I'm getting closer every time I every month that passes. My skill level goes up. I better mentally. And uh, yeah, I just want to be the best at this game, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Um, 
besides like uh, learning from other players, I guess, uh, what do you think you really need to do to become a god? This game. Say, uh, just like mental. It's mostly just mental. I think melee is all mental, and uh, just being able to play in the zone right away, and uh, even if you know you're not playing your best, not letting it get to you, and uh, not really tilting. I think my biggest problem was I tilted. A lot, especially against like sheiks back in the day. Like even if they're like mid-level sheiks, I tend to get like pissed off. But uh, now it's just like you just gotta play and uh, realize. Current meta game, everyone plays even pretty lame, including me. I'd say I'd say people think I'm like this aggressive falcon, but uh, I'm kind of like in the middle. Just gotta go with it. And um, how do you kind of practice this though? Like how uh, do you practice like the mental game? The mentality and keeping yourself in the zone. Say there's no real uh the best way is just to keep going to like tournaments and uh being exposed to a lot of like uh pressure. Mm -hmm. There's no other like real way to uh deal with that in my opinion. I mean there's probably like uh maybe med meditation, right? But, uh, mm -hmm. for me personally just like as I go to like uh for this year, there's like a lot of big tournaments, one after another, like Five Gods, uh, Pound, CEO, and uh, this year is when like I really went to a lot of nationals like in a row. Like before that, it was just like there's two big tournaments a year. So yeah, I, I think like, this year like I really got the practice I needed to get to the next level. Do you ever find yourself burning out from going to too many tournaments? Because I know like Wes. Has been at that point right now where he's just like, I don't want to travel as much. And then a lot of the SoCal players have kind of been like, uh, they kind of just don't want to go to locals that much anymore because it's just all this time and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, just because there's so many tournaments, like, uh, it's becoming more like, you're not as like hype as it used to be. Like back in the day, like even Evo was like, uh, I talked to some players like Ice, and they're like. I'm like, hey, are you hyped for Evo? And he's like, it's just another, it's just another tournament to me now. Like, uh, it's just because there's so many tournaments one after another. What the fuck's CEO and so forth. For me personally, though, uh, I sometimes feel kind of burned out. But for me, I just need to have a good balance in life. I can't just be focused only on melee. Especially when I pretty much got to go like almost every week now to like a tournament. Just got to have a good balance. And then I won't. I don't see myself burning out too soon. What are the things you do to balance out, like, besides Smash? You've been streaming a bit, but anything else? It's been, uh, well, I'm unemployed right now, so I'm just, like, chilling out a bunch. You got that, you got that sponsorship, a... that counts. As, that's uh, true, yeah. That's employment, like, that's employment. Yeah. Alright, alright, it's fine. <laughs> but, uh, besides that, I've just been bumming it, uh, kicking with people. Uh... So far, it's pretty nice. I want to eventually move out of this phase, but mm -hmm. it's very relaxing. I think it's the best part. Like, I'm not like uh, some people who have like a full time job and they do they balance it with Smash. So. Mm -hmm. And um, you still live at home, right? Have your parents like has your family ever been like kind of like holding Smash back for you, or like like how did it uh, family feel about it? They're pretty chill nowadays. I'm I'm lucky in their respects. Like uh, they over when I went to college, I kind of switched from uh, stereotypical Asian parents. Like you got to do this and this. You got to be a doctor, lawyer, engineer, or we're gonna disown you. Like they they want me to have they want me to love life, have fun, and uh, they also know that uh, you know pro gaming could be lucrative, especially in like Korea, for example. Like it was, it's a thing in Korea to be you're like a a rich you're pretty rich if you're a pro gamer. Uh, plus, like I told them, when I'm, if this doesn't really work out, or if I'm done with melee, then uh, I'll just get a job. I'll probably study like computer science, learn how to program, and uh, find a job pretty quick. Hopefully, it doesn't come down to that. But uh, you know, I I have what it takes to get a job. I got my college degrees and stuff, so not in a bad spot by any means. Yeah, and uh. I guess, like, you want to make this, like, 
a full time living, right? As a player. And uh I guess uh, like yeah, for now, yeah. I'd be down. What about like after being a player? If you like stayed in the realm of esports. After being a player, uh Hopefully by then I find out what I really want to do for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I don't really know yet, so. I see. Um, actually, the stream went down a little bit. But um, let me see if it's back up. Uh, Sorry, I can't really hear you. Oh, no. Your, your mic's kind of low. Is it, uh, is oh, it still doing up. that? Still doing it? Not anymore. Fucking Comcast is like been sucking really bad. I'm afraid, uh. I don't know, like, around this time, like, Comcast has just been, like, dying on me. Actually, I still can't hear you, sorry. Fuck. <laughs> uh... Um. Let me see. It's still down. I can sort of hear you. Can you, can, wait, check the chat. Because it's, uh, it's pretty perfect. Um. Well, here, we can... Okay, so how do you feel about the SUJ kind of memes? Like, uh, you, Johnny Can't Edgeguard, or like the... Uh, how do you feel, how do you feel about that? Uh, it's alright. It's kind of more motivation to be better at edgeguarding. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not a big fan of memes personally, especially people who like meme at me in real life, but uh... Whatever, it's just uh, it's it's actually more funny than anything. Like uh, I'll mess up like the hardest Asgard, and then uh, it'll always be funny, just cause you know. <laughs> so I don't mind it too much. And um, like wait, like so people meme to you in real life. Like what do they do? How do they meme to you in real life? They'll just say like uh, common shit that uh, you know, like they're like, hey, Johnny, what's your favorite food? Or um, another one's like, uh, this one that's like really stupid, like, what was in the third cup? Like, uh, I think at like Smash Summit, I was, uh, drinking like a Red Bull water and then there's like a third cup. And then, uh, for some reason, this is like some hilarious meme to a lot of people, like, what was in the third cup? <laughs> and then people will ask me, and then I'm like, why do you, why do people keep asking me? And they like laugh their ass off. And like, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just whatever. I wish people would talk normally, but uh, memeing is so huge nowadays that it like makes people do it in real life. It sucks. <laughs> How so, did uh, the Johnny Jug come into play? I just always bought a jug, and then uh, it became like one of my trademarks, I guess. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wait, is uh, my audio better right now, or is it? Yes, yeah, it's a lot better. It's it was better. it was shaky at first, but uh, now now it's totally fine. Hold on, let's see if the stream... The stream's still down. Oh, shit. Yeah. The stream, I don't know, it, it, like, cut out. But, uh... God damn it. Let me... Let me try and cycle the stream really quickly. Sure. Yeah. Um... Help us... Uh, restarted. Yeah. Um... Hopefully Comcast doesn't start dying on me. This is... This is what I was warning you about it'll like randomly around this time it just starts going in and out but at least uh this guy called never dropped yeah it's all good well, i'm sure you can just edit yeah your video yeah and um are there any kind of mo memorable experiences you've had in your career anything that sticks out any memories just like you'll never forget uh probably like the you know, melee brings in a lot of people that you would never meet in a uh, normally. So you meet a bunch of characters, and SoCal has plenty of those people. And um, can't really say uh, a whole lot of those on stream. It's like too uh, really funny, but uh, shouldn't be told to the average person. What's up? Basically, basically, like the people, the people are what made it worth. It. Like uh, you meet like uh, pretty much every spectrum of nerds that also love melee and uh you meet like your, your good friends from here like uh i'd say uh my current best friends are all smash players right now so yeah like 
kind of growing up in like the middle class, you definitely like don't get exposed to too many people too. But like you kind of know it, and there's like people. From yeah, like, yeah. All like, all the social classes. For me, it was just like a. Just go to school and study and don't fuck it up and go to college <laughs> and get a job. It's like, what a boring ass life. Come on. <laughs> I guess. That's uh, just, yeah. Are there any stories that you can tell that are appropriate enough, I guess? <laughs> um, I can only think of like Romeo stories. <laughs> I think it was a really funny one. I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see if the chat has any questions. Um. Oh, I want to call it how like it's kind of cool that your parents like think like pro gaming and like related back to kind of Korea's pro gaming scene. How it made it like more acceptable, I guess. Yeah. That's actually really cool. Yeah. Uh, I'd say I'm hella lucky. I think most Asian parents are still like, like what the hard, shit, <laughs> hardcore. Be a doctor, lawyer, whatever, or uh, we'll disown you and we won't love you and fuck you. Waste yeah. our time. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I guess uh, another question is, uh, what so, happened at Pound? What do you? Sorry, it sounds kind of cutting out again. No. Okay. Uh, what? What happened at Pound when you punched Wizzy? I didn't hear uh, whatever chat, you just said chat, 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 in the last read. 10 seconds. Uh, read the chat. I, uh, what happened at Pound when you punched Wizzy, basically? Like, like popped off hella hard and punched Wizzy. I can't. I, I can't. I only heard you say Wizzy. <laughs> and that was, like, barely. No. Read, read the Skype chat. Alright. Skype chat. What happened at... What happened at Pound when he punched Wizzy? I I was just fucking hype. I got top eight, dude. <laughs> and like, you see me when I beat him, I did like a sick comeback. I was down like zero to like eighty percent, and then uh, I did like fucking run off falling knee. That was fucking dope. I was hyped. <laughs> and then uh, I don't know why I punched Wizzy. I guess I was just hyped. to got top eight, and I beat Wizzy, who uh, normally fucks my shit up. He's like the fucking Ditto King, and I beat him. And, uh, yeah, not too proud of myself, but at least people thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> and I think maybe, uh, Wizzy likes me less, but decent sacrifice. Uh-huh. Did you get all that? Yeah, I got it. No, can you hear me? Fine right now? I can, I can hear you enough now. Yeah, so, like, the, um... I've never had a problem with uh, your video, so it's good right now. Like, everything's, okay. like, fine on your end. All right, all right. Uh, uh, what, keep... went, what went through my mind after I hit him, I'm like, oh, fuck. And then you see me, like, pat his shoulder, like... <laughs> it's like, sorry. Okay, my, my bad, dude. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> you beat Wizzy, you just, like, beat him in-game and out-of-game. Um, how I'm, did... a, I'm a fucking... I'm a, I'm a dweeb, dude. <laughs> Dork. How did you uh, get your tag? Why S two J? Uh, my tag's stupid. I was like fourteen, and then uh, I just listened to like a song, maybe by Sublime, and I'm like, hey, that's really cool. And then I made my my, my brood war name, and then Smash Boards. And then, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't really think of anything else that was that was a tag. So I'm like, whatever. But uh, it's kind of it's it's fine. SCG is a fine tag, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of wish it wasn't what it was though, because then I have a lot of people come up to me and they're like, "Do you smoke weed?" Or like, "Hey, let's smoke." Like people, some people think it's like an open invitation to like smoke with me. But they don't know this person. There's always some people like that too, and they're like, "Yo, you got a, you got a pipe?" Or a, uh, and it's just it's pretty annoying, but uh. Whatever, I fucked up, pretty much. <laughs> I'm cool with it. Could be worse. Yeah. I tell you, it could be like stab, 
or something terrible. <laughs> you remember, you remember stab by stab by nipple? I'm, yeah, I remember stab by hippie. Thank, thank, thank God I'm not stab by nipple. All right, I'll take it. Um, let me reauthorize my Twitch account really quickly on XSplit. Oh man, I'm getting wrecked by Comcast Sucks. right now. Yeah, fucking Comcast. I need a like a Google Fiber sponsorship or something. That'd be the dream. Um, let's see. Can I get back online? Um, let's see. There's something else. Um, you talked about Brood War. Did you play a lot of Brood War? I played a decent amount. I was a big fan of uh, the pro gaming and Brood War towards like the end of the its run. Did you play on like I Cup? Yeah, I did. What uh, rank do you get to? I got to C minus, and then uh, I was pretty proud of myself, so I stopped because uh, it was taking up a lot of my time. Yeah, that's getting like to C minus is pretty. Yeah, pretty I'd good. say even like D D plus is uh, pretty impressive. You should give yourself like a pat on the back. Did you did you run it into like any like now pros? No, no. I think pros are uh, like A minus. No, they're like A plus, like B minus. They're like A minus, worst case B plus. I think like uh, the average uh, American pro was like a, a B. So mm -hmm. I was like a C minus. What race did you play? I played Terran. Played Terran. Did you play StarCraft 2 at all, or no? I, I didn't hear what you said. I think you said you play StarCraft 2? Yeah. Uh, I played it when it came out. It was alright. I like Brood War better. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. Comcast sucks, once again. Uh... Any moments you want to talk about? Uh, can't really. Don't. Can't think of any that come to mind. Maybe ask the chat for more questions. Probably the best way to go about it. Who's the hardest for you to beat right now? That's easily Plup. Mm -hmm. I still haven't taken a match off of Plup, and I played him a decent number of times. I always get like three would or like two would I get my ass beat, and uh, whenever I play Gods like Armada. Hbox and best out of five. Uh, I tend to take like a match at least. Up, I just get like smacked down. I just get fucked. Why do you think that? Like, why do you think he does that? It's a combination of him being like a an amazing player, and he just has access to the best Falcons. While uh, for me, SoCal, the caliber of Sheiks I can play against are nothing close. To what a uh, Plup gets played against. So Plup's just uh, very experienced, and he's amazing. And he's amazing. He's fucking. I think he could easily be like one of the gods. Honestly, it just that uh, I think his promise he tilts. And um, how do you think you make up for the lack of top player, top characters, like top players of each character in your area? It's a lot of studying and uh, how I. Changed out of Evo, I just found uh, my homies, the one, and uh, Plup was nice enough to let me play him before I played my Sheik, Sheik matches. I also played a Samus before I played Duck. But playing those people before I go into like my bad matchup matches, like Sheik, once again, like uh, you play like a really good Sheik, and then you play a worse Sheik. It's so much easier. <laughs> and um, do you have any advice for up and coming Falcon mains? Say, uh, just, uh, focus on getting better because Falcon's a tough character, but uh, he's definitely viable and you gotta be good at everything. You can't like try to uh, half ass your way, you can't be an ice that wobbles and get results. You gotta be pretty like spot on with like every tech generally. Like, uh, he's tough, but he, I think he pays off. He's it's a good payoff if you make it happen. Mm hmm. Hmm. I think uh, we should kind of end it here just because... Can you hear sure, me again? Yeah. yeah, I can or, hear you. It's fine. Yeah, this is about where my internet just dies for the next, like, three hours. So. Fuck. All right. Yeah, well. it's unfortunate. Uh, let me see if there's any final questions in the chat. Uh, do you have any shout-outs you want to give? Uh, shout-outs to... Uh, mostly SoCal, the homies, and uh, all the buddies I made besides SoCal. 
Raquel homies and uh shout outs to you, my fans and uh people who uh still believed in me even when I was getting fucked up. Shout out to Tempo for uh being nice enough to sponsor me. And uh yeah. That's pretty much it. Shout outs to like Norwalk too, my best homies. Uh, I guess a uh, closing question. Favorite tournament experience that you've been to? Probably uh, Big House One, honestly. Mm -hmm. I say that because uh, it was 150 people, but uh, everyone there was really cool, and that's when I first made my deep run and got second place. I beat uh, Kirby Kaze, Raynex. And, uh, that's when I first made like a good showing for myself. Mm -hmm. So it definitely holds like a special place in my heart because that was my first uh, good tournament, basically. Like a modern day tournament is probably like a Big House Five, or a... maybe even like this Evo. You know? Yeah. Finally uh, had a uh, good results. Yeah, I guess our final closing question is like, how do you feel about getting sponsored by Tempo and then beating Wes? Kind of like these two huge, huge blocks for you, like kind of back to back, knocked him out. Uh, it was really good, and I think it was really funny that uh, I beat Wes after he uh, ditched Tempo for G2. I'm sure my boss is really happy when it happened. <laughs> yeah, I think Reyna was actually watching it in the crowd, and then I talked to him after. Like, he was, he was pretty happy when he talked to me. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it felt pretty good. Not it's a pretty good storyline. Yeah. Um, I guess if you want to follow SUJ, he streams at SUJ Falcon. You guys should sub to him. Show him the love. You can follow him at tempo underscore suj. No longer at suj falcon. So if you want to follow anyone who's not suj, follow that person. Uh, you can follow me at ashgon and ashgon underscore. They're all right there. Um, thanks for joining me today, Johnny. Really yeah, no good. problem, dude. Uh, pleasure's mine. Nice. Uh, thanks for having me again. Yeah, see ya. it was great. Hey, right, see you, Johnny. See you, dude.